it's Marvelo and welcome back to my channel. I recently just got off with my antidepressant more abruptly than I would have liked and unfortunately I ended up going through withdrawals. Antidepressant withdrawals are not fun and I'm no stranger to them before. They've put me in the ER before because they can just be so overwhelming. So I just wanted to talk to you all about what causes an, what causes an antidepressant withdrawal, what they feel like, some tips for dealing with them and maybe preventing them in the first place, and yeah. I think that about covers it. <laughs> now, these things can differ depending on what exactly you are taking. In particular, I will be talking about SSRIs and SNRIs. If you're not sure the difference between SSRIs and SNRIs, I'm not really 100% sure either. I'm not an expert. I have taken both. They feel like they both affect me more or less. SNRIs, I believe, are somewhat newer. They both affect your serotonin uptake and they help to balance levels of serotonin, particularly I believe they increase your serotonin, but SNRIs also deal with norepinephrine levels, so they affect the serotonin transmitters. Anyway, that's kind of irrelevant to what I'm talking about. There are tons of videos out there and information like that on the internet, so yeah. These withdrawal symptoms are not usually physiological. They're pretty much entirely mental, so it's not particularly dangerous in a physical sense. You're not going to like go into shock or anything. At least I've never heard of that happening. I'm not a doctor so I don't know for sure but that doesn't seem likely. But your brain goes from having all these higher serotonin levels to just dropping off. And so yes, with anything like that you're going to have uh, repercussions from it. Some people would say withdrawal is not the right word for it. So it's not like a withdrawal you'd get from opiates or a painkiller or anything like that where you're getting the physical shakes really. But the withdrawals are very unpleasant and very real and I have gone through them several times before. Some of the symptoms of a withdrawal are pretty obvious. Withdrawal symptoms can come on pretty fast and most people will say it takes about three days but I've found that even one or two days off of it and I feel different. Anxiety, depression, mood swings, things like that can happen pretty quickly. They say the symptoms last as long as two weeks. I've found that generally they last longer. It also depends on your dosage and how long you've been on the medication, but if you've been on it for a long time and you're on a pretty high dose and you go to nothing, your withdrawals could probably last for up to four weeks. The worst of it usually ends after about two weeks, but I've been off of mine for almost a month now and I still have some side effects of discontinuation. Which is, I think, technically what people would call it. Not withdrawals, but side effects of discontinuation. Which, yeah, I feel like saying withdrawals is a lot clearer, but a lot of people get all butt hurt, like, oh, that's a word only for this, this, and this. Whatever. Don't be crazy. Let people say their things. <laughs> Once you've been off for three days or so, especially if you've been on this antidepressant for a while, I believe you have to be on for about six to eight weeks for it to really be in your system and you're not going to have a major withdrawal. You still might have some symptoms, but unless you've been on it for like at least two months, you're probably not going to have a lot of issues going off of it because that's about how long it takes for them to work anyway. But some of the other symptoms are dizziness, loss of balance, and vertigo. Like I said, anxiety, depression, mood swings, you know, the things they were supposed to treat in the first place. Um, also, if you're using an SSNRI, I don't know if SSRIs are used for this, but SSNRIs are often used for chronic pain, so you might notice more pain in your body. I definitely did. <laughs> and I wasn't using mine to treat chronic pain, it was just an added bonus. My joints are all sorts of achy still. But that could be a hangover because I did drink last night. Anyway, off topic. You can get headaches or sometimes migraines and that's unpleasant. Um, Flu-like symptoms, I didn't experience that but the internet says that's a thing. Fatigue, you're, yeah, that's pretty likely. You're gonna feel tired and just want to nap. Also, because some of the other symptoms are so unpleasant, you might as well just nap them away if you have that option. Nightmares and trouble sleeping also are common, particularly if you had that before being treated with your antidepressant. If you have PTSD, that's more likely as well. Nausea and vomiting can also come along with withdrawals. That seems pretty physical to me, so saying it doesn't have physical withdrawal symptoms, it's not an actual withdrawal when people are nauseous and vomiting, that's seems a little silly. Also, some people have been known to get tremors and muscle spasms. That also is not something that has personally happened to me, but 
I've experienced, I guess, loss of control of my voice sometimes it feels like, but I think that's just from being in the mental state that it causes. It can also cause vertigo and electric shock sensations. Um, the electric shock sensations are really hard to describe, and that's why I made that last video. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out. Link in the description. <laughs> it's this feeling almost like you have electricity flowing through your body, which on a technical level, yes, we do have electricity flowing through our body. That is our just, you know, you've got those nerves firing off and our body is run on electricity. But usually you don't feel it. And when you're withdrawing from antidepressants, you can often feel it. Sometimes it feels like there is electricity in my fingertips. Not like when you static shock something, but like, like it's just flowing through there. It does not feel good. You can feel it anywhere in your body, or sometimes you just feel it in your head. And if you haven't experienced it, that's why I made that video, because it's like... It's really hard to explain. It's not constant either. Sometimes I'll go to do something and just a movement will throw it off. I've never heard anyone particularly explain this, but this might just be vertigo or maybe I'm not accurately describing it to people, but I always say my brain feels like a strobe light. So when I turn my head, especially if I turn it fast, it's like... <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but it's almost like my brain is turning off and on, you know, because a strobe light, it's just like a bright light pulsating. It's like my brain is pulsating on and off, and it's hard to think or hold any thought or concentrate, and it's just really frustrating and uncomfortable. I've ended up in the ER a couple times to get refills of my antidepressant because it was so unpleasant to deal with the withdrawals. Now I want to talk about some tips for dealing with withdrawals which, honestly, I don't have that many. I would say smoking weed can help a little bit, but sometimes it makes it worse. So it's kind of a gamble. You don't know how it's going to work because marijuana can affect your serotonin levels. For some people, cannabis is going to help them with their anxiety and depression. And I would say that is probably the CBD. So I think CBDs might be your friend in this situation, but THC, I find when I have a high THC strain, I'm going through withdrawals, it just makes that whole strobe light feeling worse. It's like, it's almost like the THC is depleting whatever reserves of serotonin I have left. I would also say I think it would put you at a higher risk for hallucinating from marijuana. Marijuana does not cause hallucinations almost ever. I know it has like psychedelic properties sometimes, uh, that's pretty rare though, but if you have low enough serotonin, you can have hallucinations. So just be careful because I'm not 100% sure that that could happen, but it sounds like something that could happen, you know, just be cautious. Like I said before, I think napping is probably the best thing to do. Just sleep off as much of the withdrawal as you can. If you really have to be getting off the medication. Now the best thing to do is to go and get a refill. Call your doctor or whoever prescribed your medication or go to an ER or an urgent care and try to get a refill. Usually people will be understanding because this is not a class of medication that you can really get like, addicted to or um, use recreationally I guess. Because if you're having withdrawals I guess you're dependent on it which is similar to an addiction can't really recreationally abuse most SSRIs or SNRIs. There are some natural supplements that people say work, like GABA and other things. I don't know how helpful those really are. I would take any any suggestion of that with a grain of salt, but maybe trying natural supplements in the first place is a better option. Another way to help prevent withdrawals, always call in your medication before you run out. I've always been really bad about that. And call your doctor when you see you have no refills remaining. Now, if you know that you're not going to be getting refills anymore, whether it's because you're going off the medication with your doctor's permission, or if you've just stopped seeing that doctor like I did, I had some issues with my psychiatrist and I decided to just stop going. And he kept refilling my medication, but I did know that eventually they, it would stop being refilled because I wasn't going. So what I did was I slowly weaned myself about maybe four or five months ago onto a half dose. So I was taking 60 milligrams of Cymbalta originally. Well, I was taking the off brand of Duloxetine, but whatever, same thing. I ended up weaning myself off and starting to take 30 milligrams a day, which I did that for about four months. And 
At first I felt a little bit weird and funky. The withdrawals weren't really intense though because I was still taking it and putting it in my system and my body adjusted pretty well. Now if you're on just one pill a day instead of two, maybe try taking it every other day and slowly moving it out. It's called tapering. Generally tapering off of any medication is going to help you with the withdrawals. Another way to help is uh, to start taking another SSRI or SNRI and that is not ideal. I didn't do that. Do that only with your doctor's, you know, help, clearly. I don't know where you're getting your SSRIs or SNRIs without a doctor anyway. And I recently read online that Benadryl can help as well. I don't know what it is about Benadryl that helps because that's usually, that's an antihistamine, I believe, and I don't know what it has to do with any of this stuff, so I'd have to look into it and I'd recommend you ask a doctor about that as well, or a pharmacist. You might be able to ask a pharmacist about it and that might be easier because you don't need an appointment. But Benadryl is generally not going to hurt you, so it might be worth a try and if anything it will help you get to sleep. <laughs> Another thing that really helps, at least for me, is when I can exercise. Now, quick movements, like I said, and moving the head a lot made the withdrawal symptoms worse. But when you work out, it releases different endorphins and that can help to relieve some of the symptoms. I wish I had more information for you guys. I wish there was more I could do to help, but honestly, antidepressant withdrawals are something that you just have to push through and it's best if you just have your doctor work your way through with a taper. But like I said, if you're not really fond of your doctor, it can be good to know how to taper for yourself. I hope this information was helpful or interesting. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already so you can stay updated for the next time I make a video. I love you guys and I'll see you again soon.